Welcome to the SEI Podcast Series, a production of the Carnegie Mellon University Software Engineering Institute. The SEI is a federally funded research and development center sponsored by the U.S. Department of Defense. A transcript of today's podcast is posted on the SEI website at sei.cmu.edu slash podcasts. Hello, my name is Suzanne Miller. I'm a principal researcher here at the SEI. and Today, I'm very happy to introduce you to Carol Smith, one of our senior researchers in the Emerging Technology Center. She's here to talk to us today about the human machine teaming framework, which she's been developing as part of our artificial intelligence research. And I'm very excited that you're here to talk about this because I also have a background in human computer interaction. So these two marrying up together is very exciting for me. Um, it's also very very timely that we're talking because in a couple hours uh, from now, the DOD is going to actually be announcing adoption of a set of five principles for ethical use of AI in DOD systems. And so we'll talk a little bit about that. I know that's not the main part of the framework, but yeah. you're at the very cutting edge of policy, not just research. So yeah. that's very exciting for us, and I hope it is for you too. Definitely, yeah. So let's start off, um, talk a little bit about what you do here at the SEI. What does a human computer interaction HCI person do uh, in some place like the SEI? Yeah, yeah. So in the teams I'm working with, we're doing a lot of prototyping and really thinking through early ideas. And so the work I'm doing is to understand the problem at its source. So so what is uh, the individual who's going to interact with the system, an analyst or a warfighter, who, whoever it is, really trying to understand their point of view, their mindset, and then bring that information back to make sure that we're building the right thing and right. building it in the right way. And so um, by using that, that data collection, uh, that research, I can uh, better understand that information and, and really help everybody to to really understand who they're building for and why. And human-computer interaction and artificial intelligence, we don't always think about those things together. Yeah. Um, you know, AI, that's what the machine does. So yeah. what is it that connects and why do we need a, a human uh machine teaming framework. I'm, I'm very intrigued by that way that that is constructed. Yeah, yeah. So ideally, these these systems are actually augmenting our intelligence and, and helping us to be better at the work that we're doing and doing the things that we don't do as well more quickly for us while allowing us to be uh, using the skills that we have as mm -hmm. humans to, to, uh, to partner and to really bring those skills together. And so the human-computer interaction um, aspect is even more important with artificial intelligence because there's a lot of distrust um, often of artificial intelligence and, and machine learning systems. And so by really understanding what it is that is going to help people to better partner and to, to trust the systems more, we can help them to be more successful right. because they'll be able to partner more effectively. Um, at the same time, we also want to make sure that the system is built in such a way that they should trust it. And so it's also part of that is, is bringing the humanity into the AI system, not that it can become sentient or, or anything like that, and not that we necessarily even want that, um, but rather to make sure that it's reflecting what we need it to, the reality that we want it to. So one of the things that I hear from people that are starting to interact, and you know, all of us are starting to interact with AI systems. If you yeah. use Google Assistant or Alexa or mm -hmm. Siri, you may or may not realize that you're using something that has an AI back end. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, one of the things I hear people say is, I don't trust it because it's like magic. I can't mm -hmm. tell, you know, like it, Yes, it gave me the suggestion that I need right now, and that's creepy. Mm -hmm. um, so what is it about this framework that you're doing that is meant to help to allay people's um, issues with, you know, yes, this is trustworthy, or no, you really shouldn't trust this, and, you know, turn it off now. Yeah, yeah, and part of it is just, just helping people to understand why it's making decisions it's making, what, mm -hmm. what information is it using. Um, but really, the, the first step is very early in the process, before an AI is even being developed, before the first line of code is written, is to have the team really think through the, the breadth of the work that they're doing and to be speculative about the potential... Um, um, bad uh, outcomes that could happen because of the work that they're doing, as well as the good outcomes. And to really think through that so that they are better able to protect people and so that the okay. system is built in such a way that it is really going to be trustworthy because it's being built with their ethics, the technology okay. ethics that they keep in mind. So uh, the way I talk about that, uh, and we do this in measurement all the time, is mm -hmm. we want to avoid, we want to understand what the unintended consequences could be and then avoid the ones that are really 
going to hurt our ability to use whatever it is that we're dealing with. Yeah. So that kind of leads us into the um, idea of ethics mm -hmm. in AI. And this has been a topic um, that has really come to the fore in recent years. Um, we have research going on on campus in that area. Mm -hmm. We've got research at the SEI. There's research you know, all over the place. Um, there was a defense in innovation board uh, report that came out last October mm -hmm. um, that is dealing exactly with this ethics in AI and the DOD. And so that ref resulted in, I think is one of the things that resulted in the uh, DOD announcing today that it's going to adopt these principles. And I'm just gonna read them for our viewers um, to, and we can just comment a little bit on how important these are to the kind of trust that we're trying to build across this whole space of AI, not just in the DOD. Yeah. So we want the, um, we want to use AI systems responsibly, uh, with humans being able to exercise appropriate levels of judgment. We want them to be equitable, so we want to avoid unintended bias. We want them to be traceable, which is what we're talking about. How do we get to where we are? Mm -hmm. They want them to be reliable, so they need to be within a well-defined domain and not sort of going out into the ether, mm -hmm. talking about you know how you make crepes when you're really not anything about making crepes. <laughs> um, and they want to, and they need to be governable. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to to hit on that last one just a little bit. What does it mean for an AI system to be governable? Because I think the others are pretty intuitive mm -hmm. for p anybody that's sort of worked in this space for a while, but the governable one was the one that struck me as being, yeah, I like it, but what are we really talking about there? Yeah, and I think it's going to depend on the on the industry, but per particularly um, here, it's it's being able to know the breadth of its responsibilities and also where its limits are, and and making sure that that is understood by the people using it as well as the organizations that that are getting data from it and and really regulating to some extent what it is. And I don't actually remember what the what the statement is there, so I'm curious. Uh, engineered to fulfill their intended function. Mm -hmm but possessing the ability to detect and avoid an unintended harm or disruption okay. and then disengage or deactivate. I, that was the okay. thing is that yeah, the, the governable yeah, is I can yeah. disengage it. We, yeah, yeah, we, we're yeah. not going to end up with the, right. with the robot, right. you know, I want to robots sure taking over the world because right. exactly. that's where that, I, yeah. I don't remember Asimov's principles, but no, you know, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we, yes. I can talk to that. Yeah. yeah. So, so that aspect of being able to be disengaged, I think is actually one of the things that, um, that enables trust. Definitely. Yeah. And, and making sure that humans always feel that they have that ability yeah. um, and that if the system is not doing what's expected, that they're able to shut it off and that there's mitigation plans in place as well for those instances. Because it's likely with these systems that there are going to be instances where we're going to feel that the information it's giving me isn't accurate anymore or um, it's making a correlation here that, that doesn't make sense. And right. so... I'm not going to use that right now. Instead, I'm going to use a different system or I'm going to use my own uh, my own experience to apply to the situation. Yeah. And there's other places in the SEI. Uh, some of our other colleagues are working in things like causal learning mm -hmm. and understanding the causal structure of information so you can combine it with some of the AI machine learning to say, yeah, this is the data, this is the structure that actually has meaning. This one, not so much. Let's turn right. that one off because yeah. we, we really know we the data we're getting over there it's costing us money to collect it and we aren't actually getting the benefit from it. So that's right. another aspect that I think the governable comes into play. Yeah. So how do you know how long, I don't know how long it's been that we've been actually talking to DOD about this kind of ethics issues. Has this been a very long uh, you know, kind of journey, or is this something that actually happened relatively quickly? Yeah. So the the more recent aspects, as far as um, artificial intelligence and ethics, is is more recent within the past two years. Um, but the the DoD has a long history of, of really talking about ethics and thinking through this, particularly with um, the the types of situations that they're regularly in. Sure. There are laws of war. There, there are all kinds of regulations across the different services, and and they have their own sets of of ethics, if you will, as far right. as what they expect from the service people. And so that, that's that been very common and well accepted for a very long time. And this is building on that long history. Um, but this is really relatively recent and very exciting. Well, and getting defense innovation board studies don't just pop out of the air. Right. You know, they, they happen for a reason. And so the fact that this was considered to be a topic that was worthy of getting people together to really think about 
how do we do this in a in a coherent way yeah. um, is is very very important for all of us um, that are doing this kind of work. So let's let's talk go back to talking about this uh, the human machine teaming framework. Yeah. Um, how public is this? If people want to start looking at it, start applying it, yeah. what kind of resources have you gotten? What what are you looking for in terms of collaborators yeah. to help you further that research? Yeah, definitely. So so the work is available online. Uh, there's a paper on the archive, which we can link to. Um, the checklist uh, that came out of that is also available on the SEI website as a fact sheet. And uh, certainly looking for all kinds of feedback and ways to improve this and, and really to take this to the next level. Um, the checklist is just a start. There are definitely some gaps. Um, I was talking with somebody um, online today about how um, I talk about does it align to your values, and, and that's a very vague statement. Um, how, do you, how do you really think through that? How can we better um, place mm. this terminology and, yeah. and, and state these things that are more clear and more easy to actually implement? When you're talking about a software solution, values is, is, is squishy, um, and people aren't sure. very comfortable with that, which, which is reasonable. And, and so trying and, to and make it easier and easier to That's implement. a context-dependent thing, yes, right? Because the much. values, when I'm in an operational setting versus in an acquisition setting yep. or development setting, they're not exactly the same. Right. And so the understanding of, you know, context, how to apply context to those kinds of, uh, that kind of thinking is one of the things that, that I think we try to provide guidance in other areas as well. So Definitely. that'll be something that I, I think is going to be evolving. Yeah. What's coming? What What's sort of your next big thing that you're tackling in relationship to this human teaming framework? Yeah, yeah. So working on improving this, working on uh, really just trying to, to see how people are using it, potentially having different versions for different types of applications. I mean, th there are a lot of different ways this can go. One of the things I would like to see is um, really helping people to mature the process that they go through as they consider and then implement an AI system and, and thinking through helping them to okay. think through those those issues because um, the 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 work has to be done somehow at some point you really do need to think through those implications and that needs to take a little bit of time but at the same time working in an agile fashion and and being able to be yeah. iterative and and productive in a reasonable timeline right. is important too and how do you balance the tension there and, and thinking through that as well the process is is really important ai engineering in general and okay getting that moving so the connection between this kind of framework and kind of uh, innovation research. I, I, we haven't talked about that before. I'm sort of dropping this in, but it, it came into my head that yeah. this is actually very well connected to mm -hmm. the whole idea of innovation because with innovation, we're trying to get new ideas adopted. Right. And often the values conversation kind of triggered that, mm -hmm. that we're dealing with misalignments yes. and we have the same problem in HCI that mm -hmm. when we have misalignments of expectations, we that's when we get some of the unintended consequences. Right. Is yeah. that a source of research for you in terms of of sort of taking some of the things out of that domain and seeing how you can focus them, I guess, would be on the, on the HCI problem. There have been a lot of situations that we can learn from in the past few years, unfortunately. Um, and so learning from negative consequences sure. is one way of, of realizing, uh, you know, how we could make improvements and, and change processes. Um, innovation is definitely the area that, that I'm working in with the emerging technology right. and thinking through um, the just new problems, problems that we haven't necessarily thought about in these ways, um, how um, humans and robots are working together, how um, humans and, and just regular uh, computing machines are, are working together, um, really just trying to, to think about these areas, but in the broader sense now, because with, with artificial intelligence, the systems have a lot more reach, the, there's a lot more data sure. to deal with, there's just more and more implications, and, and really having people think through that is, is important. Excellent. I, I see you being busy. Um, <laughs> yeah. This is, you know, this is an area that is emerging, um, and we're just kind of starting to hit the high points of, yeah. oh, we're going to have to deal with HCI. Oh, we're going to have to deal with ethics. Oh, yeah. we're going to have to deal with big data. So I think we're, I, I, I used to teach a class in AI and decision making back in 1989. That's how nice. old I am. And, and I'm just thinking about the issues we talked about then and what we're talking about today. We could not have had anything close to this conversation. Yeah. You know, it was all about forward and backward chains and logic chains and things. Yeah. Nothing like we're, we're able to do today. So this is a very exciting 
exciting time. And I really appreciate having the conversation with you yeah. about your work. I'm looking forward to actually bringing maybe some of it into some of the things I do. Excellent. Um, so I, I really appreciate you, you taking this time out for us. It was a pleasure. Thank you. For our viewers, the transcript of this podcast will include links to the kinds of resources we've been talking about. Um, the, it will be available on the SEI website. Uh, also be available where you get your other podcasts. And if you qu have any questions, please don't hesitate to s send us an email at info at sei.cmu.edu. Thank you very much for viewing. Thanks for joining us. This episode is available where you download podcasts, including SoundCloud, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts. It is also available on the SEI website at sei.cmu.edu slash podcasts and the SEI's YouTube channel. This copyrighted work is made available through the Software Engineering Institute, a federally funded research and development center sponsored by the U.S. Department of Defense. For more information about the SEI and this work, please visit www.sei.cmu.edu. As always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email us at info at sei.cmu.edu. Thank you.